we're gonna mix it up a bit today. We're gonna think outside the box. And what I mean by that is we're gonna use products that are intended for one area of the face on a different area of the face. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you guys what I mean. Well, when you think of an eyeshadow, what do you think of? Your eyes. When you think of a lipstick, your lips. Blush, your cheeks. But what if I told you you can use your eyeshadow as contour, you can use your lipstick as blush, you can use your lip liner as eyeshadow base. So we're gonna switch it up today and I'm gonna show you guys how I use my products in various ways. Now how I came about using my products in various ways is I've been a professional makeup artist for 25 years and I try to make sure that my kit is fully prepared for any situation, whether that be for editorial work, brand work, client work, weddings, etc. But every now and then, I have had to quickly think outside the box to create a product that my kit either didn't have at the time or it just wasn't the right color for my client. So let's go ahead and have some fun. I'm gonna show you guys how to play with makeup in a more artistic way. Let's start with complexion. Now there was this one time that I had this beautiful model and I had several foundations, but she just didn't sit within the foundations I had. So I had to quickly think about how am I going to make her skin tone look as natural as possible? And I didn't have foundations, but I had several concealers. So I used the liquid highlighter to give me that emollient base with my concealer. And I'm gonna do that today. And you guys can see how you can quickly create a beautiful complexion that's similar to foundation. Now I like to work up the back of my hand and especially when I'm working with clients and models, etc., because I don't want to go directly onto the face and get any you know, bacteria in my products. I want to be hygienic. So what you're going to do now is take your liquid and just mix it. This creates a beautiful editorial glow because obviously you have the shimmer in the highlighter and then you have the coverage that you want with the concealer, but it gives a really dewy look. And this is what I call editorial skin which is thin layers meant to give a sheer healthy glow. So we have no foundation, concealer, and a highlighter. Now add a little more of that concealer to the back of my hand, and I'm just gonna go in and assess the makeup at this point. And it's really important if you want that beautiful, flawless complexion is to build up slowly, work in thin layers, but then go back and see where do I need more coverage? Where can I target areas that are standing out, purples, blue, red. So I'm going around the nose and then I'm gonna tap this around the eyes. All right, let's go ahead and get to the next section. Now I wanna highlight and I wanna contour, but we're still thinking outside the box, remember? So what are we gonna to use today for highlighter? I'm going to use an eyeshadow. Now this one is the Tom Ford Chalet Lust Palette. If you guys haven't tried this palette wet, please do yourselves a favor, it is so beautiful. I use this all over the face, which you're gonna see right now, I use it as a highlighter. But wet these and glide them across the lower lid, it creates the most beautiful, light, subtle, brightening effect. Highly recommend. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna take a little bit of this color up here, and let's go ahead and take a little bit of this as well. Now I'm going to just tap it all the way around the cheekbone, and up onto that brow bone. Now I deposit most of the color here first. That's why I start here. And by the way, where you first place your color down is going to be the most saturated. So if I started here, it would be a high beam type of look on my brow bone and I don't want that. I'd rather have more color through here. So wherever you place your first stripe with a brush, or placement with your finger, just remember that's where the most pigment and the most bold part of the color is going to be. Adding a little bit more here, I'm going to lightly place it around the bridge of my nose, and then I'll go right here on the high point of my forehead. And some of you might be asking, why are you doing that? Because when I turn my head, I want the high points of my face to catch light. This is a high point, this is a high point, this is a high point, this is a high point. Anywhere where bone sticks out the furthest on our face. Add a tiny bit to the cupid's bow here. Add a little bit more and put it around the ear. Oh no, we're out of contour. What do we do? And trust me, this has happened to me, unfortunately, 
a couple times. Usually I reach for lipstick. So what I'm gonna show you guys is how you can use your lipsticks to create a beautiful shadow. Now remember, there's a difference between bronzer and contour. Bronzer adds warmth, contour adds shadow. Contour is cool, bronzer is warm. I'm gonna go in with this darker lipstick. Now this is normally what I would use for somebody with medium to deep to truly deep skin tones. This is the color Dominatrix, oh, such a good one, by NARS. How I'm gonna use Dominatrix today is I'm going to place just a little bit on the outer corner of the cheek and where the C shape of your jaw opens and closes, you don't wanna go past that point to create a true hollow. And take my finger now and just blend it in and I stay very controlled. I'm not doing big sweeping motions and less is more once again. You don't need a lot of product. Your product should last far longer than I guarantee most of your products out there are lasting. Less is more. See that hollow right there? Now I'm keeping it really through here, but then I'm gonna start blending it down just a tiny bit, but I don't wanna go past the outer corner of my eye. But I do wanna let it drag just a bit. Now, why aren't I working down or in circles? If I work too big, it'll look muddy and flat. How pretty and subtle is that? Now, looking at this, most of you, especially with how fair I am, would think, oh my gosh, how is she going to make that work with how dark this is and how light she is? But it's how you place the color down and how much product you put down. Now, when you look straight ahead, you should see a light shadow on the outer corner. Shouldn't be in the front. It should just be when you turn your head, it starts to turn on the outer edge and create a hollow. All right, I'm gonna take a little more. Place a little bit under this nose here so I can shorten it because I have a longer nose. So if you're somebody who wants to shorten the length, you're just gonna place it underneath the nose and then work up around the edge. And I just work right here. So basically the farther up you go, the shorter it makes the nose look. Now, I'm not trying to change my nose shape. I'm just trying to kind of soften some of my features. Grabbing a little more here, I'll go under the lip. Hopefully you can see it's creating a nice little shadow under there. You have oily lids and you need an eyeshadow base. And you want something to help the shadow stay on better. Also, you want something to intensify the shadow that you're about to put on. One of my favorite ways, besides using eyeshadow primer, which I'm gonna show you guys a trick in a minute, is to use eyeliners, especially a Kajul eyeliner that is creamy and soft. So what I'm gonna do is take the Kajul eyeliner, and this is in the color Bordeaux, and this is by Victoria Beckham, and I just did a full video on Victoria Beckham eyeliners. I have 11 out of the 13. I go through them all with you guys, and I show you various ways to use them. I will link that down below, but this is what I show you in that video, and I'm gonna show you guys today. I take my eyeliner, nice and creamy. I take a brush, Now you can use a synthetic brush, or you can use a bristle soft hairbrush. Both work great. I find for me that the hairbrush just gives you a softer finish. So I load that up and then I'm just going to place this lightly all over the lid. Cause remember we're using this as a base. Now you can wear this as an eyeshadow look, absolutely. But I'm gonna show you guys how to use an eyeshadow on top of this. Here's the nice thing about Kajul eyeliner, or Kajul in general, is that it's creamy, it goes on really soft. You give it a couple seconds to set and then it doesn't move throughout the day. This has been my go-to. It has been in constant rotation for me. This is the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette and you're gonna see how damaged it is. I have been poking around in it and using it wet and dry and just having so much fun with this palette, which I recommend you guys do with all your makeup. Have fun. Now what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to take a spoolie. Now you can use a Q-tip or the end of a brush. The goal here is that we want to scrape a little bit of the shadow off into a lid, or you can use your palette if you're a makeup artist. You can use the back of your hand. I find a lid to work the best because the edges help it not to fall all over the place. Now pick the color that you want. I'm gonna stick with purple today, and that's because I have hazel eyes, so it's gonna bring out the brown and the green. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this beautiful gray purple color, and then I might end up going in and adding a little bit of this red, but first let's start up here. This is the color Serenity. Taking the end of my makeup brush, 
I'm grabbing some of that and I'm just going to tap it into the cup here. I'm going to take a little bit of my primer. This is the Forever Glow Veil. Now I would use an eyeshadow primer and just put a little bit like you're going to see right now into the dish because we're going to mix our own color here. Now for some of you, this might seem a bit much, but trust me, to be able to customize your own cream shadow is awesome. And it looks so nice on those of you that have deeper set lines or wrinkles because it really rolls onto the skin, creating almost like a second skin-like finish, it has like a lotion base. So I take a little bit of the primer and I'm going to mix that shadow. I'll go ahead and go on the back of my hand so you can see here what it looks like. Voila, beautiful cream shadow. Let's go ahead and tap this on. Let's start the lower lash line and build up. Now I use this technique so often on clients because I have so many colors in my eyeshadow palettes and I would never use them all up if I didn't use them in various ways. Plus, it's easier for me to mix my own colors and customize depending on the person's eye color and skin tone then to have to buy several different cream eyeshadows. I'll go in with my brush that I used for the Kajul liner. I'll add a little bit onto the brush and I'll very, very lightly, because I didn't put much on the brush, work upward onto that brow ridge. I want to gradate the color so that it goes dark, medium to light. Once again, you're gonna hear me say this a lot on this channel, it's about transition. I'd say the one thing I see consistently with clients that are learning to do makeup is that they put everything down, whether it be eyeliner, eyeshadow, or lipstick, in the same kind of um, pressure or consistency. So when you're down here, you can add a lot more by using your finger. But when I get up to the brow ridge, I start to soften my application. I work loosely and softly. And that's how you make a dry eyeshadow into a cream shadow, which creates also a nice, flick of light across the lid because it's nice and emollient now. Now I want a little eyeliner, but I forgot my eyeliner. What am I going to do? You're going to grab your shadow and you can grab a little bit of water. Now you can use shadows just dry across the lash line, but I don't want any fallout, especially since I just did all this work. I don't want black to get all underneath the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a flat brush. This is my KJH Spectrum brush number 16. I'm gonna take my cup of water, dip it in a little bit of this black. I will stamp line which is so easy to do with this brush and then I will lightly bring it in. If you get to here and you're like oh it looks a little too harsh all you need to do is take a color that is one step down. Now for me in this palette I can use the purple. Let's just go ahead and do this one or you can mix a little shimmer on top, mix them together, have a little fun and then just go right on top. Kind of soften that line up a bit. That easy. We have two different looks. Eyeliner. No eyeliner. Time for a little blush. Now I want to create something dewy and light catching. Well, what are we going to do? I'm going to grab my Chanel lip balm. Now this is the Chanel number one and this is Wake Up Pink. I don't want to put my finger in the product, so I'm going to use the back of my makeup brush, which I cleaned with a little bit of alcohol. And I'll put some on my finger here. I'm going to tap my ring fingers together. And as you can see, there's a nice little glow to this. I'm just going to put a very little bit on the cheek outer corner and blend up and out. Everything should transition from one to the next softly. Here we have a glossy cheek. Now say you're looking at your makeup and you like that it has a bit of a demi matte finish, which means it sits in between a dewy finish and a matte, but you want a little more glow. My favorite way to enhance the complexion is to take a balm stick. Now Westman Atelier has a great balm stick and so does Chanel. And Chanel has several colors. I like to place it in the palm of my hand, warm up the buttery texture 
I will take my hands, put them together, and then I'll just lightly, very lightly tap across the complexion. And the reason I don't move my hands around is we don't want to move the products that we place down, such as the contour, the highlighter, and the blush. So just lightly work around the face with patting motions, and you'll get this beautiful, hydrated, glossy, glass-like skin. I like to take a tiny bit and just tap it underneath the eyes, very little bit, because we want to soften the concealer pigments, but we don't want too much because then it will settle into fine lines. It's really just to lightly moisten up those drier pigments that sit in concealer. Let's get into these lips. There's no lip gloss, no lipstick. What are we gonna do? We're gonna grab blush and a chapstick. So I have the Dior blush. This is in the color 601. I already scraped off a little bit because I'm gonna put it in our little disc that we did for our eyeshadow. And then I'm gonna mix just a Burt's Bee as the emollient base. And we're gonna put them together and we're gonna put it on the lips. The Burt's Bees. I'm gonna warm it up to create a nice, jelly, glossy texture. Take some of the powder and mix it in. Look at that. Ooh, pretty, pretty. And let's put it on. Now you know that I like to bring it all together, so I'm gonna take whatever's left on the back of my hand here. I'm going to use it in my upper cheek area. I'm gonna tap a very little bit on the lid. I'll even add a tiny, tiny bit to that brow bone. As you can see, I placed it with one finger and then I softened it with another finger. And I've said this before, but for those of you that are watching for the first time, perhaps, think of your fingers as little brush heads. Have a small to medium, small and then two medium little brush heads and it's a great way to think about using your fingers now if you wanted to add a lip liner for your blush say you're somebody who sweats a lot or you're in a high kind of humid area you can take your lip liner because it's condensed pigment pretty much and you can do a couple stripes instead of using the chanel number one um cream gloss all right everyone i hope you had fun watching this video whether you incorporate this into your daily makeup routine or you just like to be entertained by watching makeup artists do their thing either way thank you for watching and if you guys like what you're seeing here on the channel and you want to support all you need to do is go ahead and subscribe Use the affiliate links down below for any of the products I use today. And I have a list of stores that you can shop for anything you want or need. If you haven't had enough, you can head over to TikTok or to Instagram. And lastly, if you want to book me for a one-on-one -on -one artistry education lesson, you can head to shrevoyage.com. I'll have that in the description box down below. I go over several different lesson types, whether you're getting back into makeup, or you're a makeup artist that's looking to advance your skills, or you're just feeling blonde, like you need to revamp your current look, head to shrewvoyage.com for a lesson. Continue to take care of yourselves and each other. Continue to be kind to one another. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now, everybody.